I am Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon, The Blackest Heart, The Lonesome Crown, all published by Simon & Schuster's Saga Press. And today, you are going to get not only a book review, but you are going to get a lecture free of charge. Because this is going to be one of the most important book reviews I ever give. I'm laying it on heavy today, folks, and I ain't letting up on the gas. Because every American needs to read The Power of the Dog by Don Winslow, along with the rest of the chili. Chili. How serious can I get now that I've got the dialogue? With the rest of the trilogy, The Cartel, Power of the Dog, book one, The Cartel, book two, and The Border, book three, these books are about the Mexican cartel and our drug and our war on drugs <clears throat> and how we are failing on a massive scale. Now, before we get to the book review, let me just give you the lecture that I promised you that would come free of charge. And that is, you know, I work at the Utah State Prison. I deal with a lot of people that are hooked on drugs. A lot of people, a lot of good, decent people that are hooked on this shit that is created. I've got my political views on this, and we're going to hear some of them right now. Now, I remember I was in the gang unit once, and this, in this, in this uh, felon, this drug dealing felon, drug using felon, was you know going off on me about how, hey, all I did in my life, I don't, all I did was buy, sell, and use cocaine. I wasn't hurting nobody. And I said, you know what? You're full of crap, dude. He's like, who was I hurting? I was just hurting myself. The people that I sold to, they wanted the drugs. I just sold it to them. I wasn't hurting anybody. They weren't hurting anybody. Nobody was being hurt. And I was like, you are absolutely 100% wrong. He said, how can you say that, Sergeant Durfee? And I said, let me tell you something. Every time you sniff cocaine up your nose, you are responsible for the death of torture, brutality, and mayhem of a lot of people that live down in Mexico. They are being, kids are being tortured and killed and watching their families hacked to death by machetes so you can snort cocaine up your nose and you don't think you're hurting anybody? Well, fuck you and bullshit. He was like, I didn't think about it that way. And I said, dude, I'm going to give you three books you need to read, and it's going to open your eyes. And I gave him The Power of the Dog, The Cartel, and The Border. And he read them, and he was like, Durfee, I had no idea. I had no idea the damage we have done to the countries south of our border. And I said, you're goddamn right you didn't, and nobody and all these other assholes that are using these drugs don't either. Now, I have sympathy for people who are... Addicted to drugs, I do think that this is an illness that we need to take care of. Now, if I was in charge, I would stop the war on drugs because we've been losing it for 40 years. And I would just decriminalize the whole grip of them. From the worst drug to the least worst drug, I would decriminalize all of it. And we could get rid of all of this gang warfare and brutality that not only happens on our own American streets, but on especially the streets south of the border, because those people are living in absolute squalor, pain, and torture because of Americans' insatiable appetite for these illegal, illicit drugs. And if we just legalized them, we could get rid of a good portion of the pain. Now, that is just my opinion, having dealt with this in a professional capacity for many, many years. And Don Winslow spells it out in these books. Oh my gosh. You cannot look away. These are the most brutal, graphic, hard-hitting, hard-punching books that have ever been written on the subject. I don't know if you've ever seen the movie Cesario and how that, if, if you were gripped and just riveted to the screen while you were watching Cesario and the sequel to Cesario, which I forget the name of it, if you were gripped by those movies, imagine those movies dialed up a million times over, and you get the power of the dog, the cartel on the border. The power of the dog, book one, when does what? Well, let's talk about this. Deliver my soul from the sword. Deliver my love from the power of the dog. Psalms 2220, power of the dog. That's what the cartels use. That's the, that's the uh, 
It's uh, the El Poder del Perro. El Poder del, I don't know how to speak Spanish. El Poder del Perro. Um, that is the um, sort of their catchphrase. The Mexican cartels, the power of the dog. It all comes down to the power of the dog. And the dog is mean. The dog is rabid. And the dog will kill you and turn on you in a heartbeat. You know, let's read the opening sentence. Let's just read the opening sentence of this book. Baja, Mexico, 1997. The baby is dead in his mother's arms. Art Keller can tell from the way the bodies lie, her on top, the baby beneath her, that she had tried to shield her child. She must have known what was coming. And that's just one family out of tens of thousands that are killed daily by these cartels. So Americans could get high. That's how we start out. And it just gets more bloody and awful and gross and hard to look away from from there. What we've got is Art Keller, and this starts in the 1970s, the early 1970s. Art Keller is a straight rookie out of the DE agent, and he's right out of Vietnam. He's a warrior. He knows. He's seen blood and death. He thinks he's seen the worst of humanity. And then he becomes a DEA agent right out of the war, and he goes down to Mexico. They stationed him in Mexico, and now he's like, this is worse than Vietnam. This is worse than Vietnam. Dealing with this stuff, these drugs, and this drug trade, trying to figure this crap out, is wor this is worse than Vietnam. We are worse, we are dealing with this situation, as Americans, worse than we are dealing with Vietnam, and he says it right from the beginning. He's like, this is a clusterfuck of enormous proportions, and it's only getting worse. And Art Keller, he gets there, and he ends up meeting this guy in a boxing ring, and just happenstance, a boxing ring. He, the, he's kind of a boxer and he's wandering the streets and he sees this boxing, this training people. And he walks in and he, 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 he agrees to spar with their best guy. And <clears throat> their best guy is this guy, named, guy named Barrera. And he's got a cousin named Aiden Barrera. And, they make, he, and Art Keller makes friends with Aiden Barrera. Who? He makes good friends. He likes the guy. He really likes the Barreras. He likes Aiden Barrera, his brother, his cousin, the boxer. The cousin has a father. Like the Uncle Barrera named, uh, what was his name, Tio? He's a big, huge, he's a sheriff. He's like a Mexican um, federale. He's, he's like one of the top law enforcement guys in Mexico. And Art Keller likes these people, and he becomes friends with these people. And the, but little does he know that Tio, the, main, the, 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 the father of the boxer, the main, he's, he's one of the main drug cartel guys. And then not only that, but Aiden Barrera as we go through all three books, becomes the worst, most vicious Mexican drug cartel dude that is ever, and it's based off, these are based off of real stories, Feet. I mean, nothing in here is fake. And they just, he becomes friends with them, and then, and then not only that, but it also tells, this story also tells the drug war from the perspective of in Hell's Kitchen in the night, early early 1970s in New York, where a lot of people were getting hooked on these drugs that were coming up from Mexico. And then in San Diego, because we got this Irish mafia gangster guy, because this is the mafia too. This this all all of this all of this is so corrupt. It all it just corrupts everything. It corrupts everything from the Mexico all the way up to the top of Alaska. And it just in New York City, Hell's Kitchen, it's the Irish mobsters, the Italian mobsters. They're all buying and selling this stuff and killing each other on the streets over this crap. And and to say and for people to say, oh, we're not hurting anybody if we do drugs. Well, you, you are. You're causing. Ah, uh, you're just the your world is a better, a worse place because of you. And granted, we gotta fix it. We gotta legalize these things so just, stuff can get out of the way. But but while they're illegal, you are making this world an awful place to be a part of for a lot of people. Even if you just used once, someone somewhere took a machete up the asshole for you as they were being tortured. Okay? It is just a fact. And the Irish mobster, and it's turning New York, and then we got... In San Diego, we look at the whole drug war through the eyes of a prostitute named Nora. 
and so the, a lot of stories, and all of these stories interweave just magnificently. All of these characters are just so well done. This is like break. This these this story makes Breaking Bad look like Sesame Street. Uh, and and I, I mean, I can't stress to you how much to just every single person in America needs to read this trilogy. Just have their eyes open. Just open your eyes, people. Open your eyes to the evil that's in this world. Stop closing your eyes to it. Stop thinking that you're just with your, you know, your laissez-faire cavalier attitude towards drug usage, that you're just not hurting anybody because you're destroying lives that you don't even know. The butterfly effect of you snorting that shit up your nose, or you are you cooking that coke or crack in your in your meth uh, trailer park, whatever the fuck you're into, it's hurting people. It's hurting people, and people are getting addicted. Not only that, people are getting addicted to illegal substances. Now I'm saying there's a, there's a way out, folks. There's a way out, and I think it's just decriminalizing this stuff. There's a way out. People, are, I don't think it would make I don't think it would make drug usage go up at all if we decriminalized it. In fact, I think drug usage would go down. In fact, I think we would have more money to spend on rehabilitating these people because once people are rehab, once people people either die on drugs or they or they get sober and they have great lives. And we want them to get sober and have great lives. And the only way, we, and the war on drugs is not doing that. It's not doing it. It's causing more problems for everybody. And this book illustrates everything about that. And Don Winslow knows that. And he's, if you read this and then he lays it out perfectly, you're just like, why are we doing this over and over and over? Why are we involved? Why don't we come up with another plan? And there's so many great passages and so many rants that the different cops that are dealing with this stuff go through where they're just, they're having the same thoughts I am. They're just like, oh, Jesus Christ, can't we just end it already by just thinking outside of the box and doing something different? You know, like Switzerland does. Switzerland does. It's all legal in Switzerland. They don't care. They just say, man, if you're high when you get, uh, if you if you commit a crime or if you're driving and we and you're high, we're throwing a book at you. You can do whatever you want, but if you're, if we blood test you and you got that shit in your system, I think that's a that's a way out. And Switzerland doesn't have a problem with this, and they got all sorts of people in rehab, and they pay the money they used to spend on the war on drugs. They now rehab. Anyway, these books, man, everybody got to read them. Ten out of ten. These things. Everybody, this should be, this should be required reading in high school. Gosh, it would it would traumatize every kid that read it because it's just so graphically rated R. But it would also, they would never take drugs. Promise you that. They'd be like, no, I don't want to be a part of uh, some poor family's torture and rape. I mean, they waterboard people with gasoline. They skin them alive. They throw them out. They throw entire families out of helicopters. I could go on. Got to stop. It's books like these that are being written by people like Don Winslow. It's that that need to be read so people can have their eyes opened. Ten out of ten for this man. Ten out of ten for this. I read this. I just reread it for this review. I'm going to reread The Cartel on the Border. You're going to get the same lecture then, too. I'm, I'm, I'm lecturing you three times. When the, the next lecture going to come out, it's going to be the same. Different. Might be maybe even harsher. If you don't agree with me, ugh, I, I can't help you. can't help you. Do better. Do better. The Power of the Dog by Don Winslow, man. Oh, man, this thing is dynamite. This thing is required reading for every single American on a planet. 10 out of 10.